Hello, everybody. I'm Jay Lynn, and welcome to episode 24 of my Minecraft Survival World. And this episode's going to be a lot like last episode, and that we're just going to be doing lots of building. Mainly focusing on this area down here, going to be the farm area, which I've been planning on doing since I moved down to this island, and I'm really looking forward to getting started down here. I spent a little time extending the grass out here a little bit, giving me some space to work, and we're going to get a barn, a silo, and a windmill in here. And yeah, you can see we're going to have to do some terraforming at some point. We're also going to get this whole field planted and work on the other field that we've got going up there. But we're also in general just going to kind of work on getting things in a more finished state for my world tour, which is going to be next episode. And I've just kind of got a few things that I wanted to get done before then. So what the main one being that I need to get my whole base connected by a path network. So we got a nice loop going on. So starting at this bridge here and work the road on down here and get a bridge to this island, which I plan on eventually being for my nether trees, kind of extend the tree farm down here. And yeah, we'll have a bridge going across here to the main spawn island. And then of course we already got our path network going up there and eventually it'll get to where we need to build a big bridge over in the corner over there and yeah just extend the road from this bridge all the way through the jungle and then we'll be all connected up the bridge over here is going to be a big project but i have been looking forward to getting that and having a cool angled bridge over there and also a little hidden project i'm gonna let you in on that will be a surprise for later but first we're just gonna jump into getting these paths made yeah, we're just going to extend from the bridge and just kind of follow the natural terrain. I always like to use the natural Minecraft terrain best I can for inspiration and just adjust accordingly. So yeah, we just got a bunch of trees to chop to clear the way and a little bit of terraforming to do. And I headed over and did the same on the other side of the base from the other bridge. And obviously this isn't a bunch of space. I don't have anything going on yet, but it still is just going to feel good to have the nice little loop of paths and it just inspires you to do something in these areas. So yeah, we just got our temporary bridge laid out and then I kind of committed to getting a three wide path laid out. did the same on the other side. Then I got extending the temporary bridge over here and really realized how much work I had cut out for me getting a bridge going over here. It's going to take a bunch of terraforming and it's just a long span across but that's something we're going to attack later. For now I just wanted to keep on pushing and get my roads connected got some lights laid out and I was working into the nights collecting gunpowder because I was really low on that but the combination of the baby zombie and that one almost got me but then I was just gonna kill this one off like I've been doing many times before and you can probably guess what happens here I get my first hit in so I need two more but I knock them right back into the zombie who pushes them right back at me so I missed on the second hit and he got me there's our episodely death. And it really blew my stuff all over the place. I was impressed with the explosion radius. But we got things all patched up and put in the last couple lights. And we're going to make a project of the bridges a little later in the episode. For now, I'm feeling pretty accomplished just getting this all laid out here. We go all the way to the blue bridge and... I'm going to take a view from the top, and you can see we go all the way through the jungle here. So that's a pretty big path network. And like I said, we'll get to the bridges later. I always try to do some cool flying. I'm not very good at it. But that felt pretty good. I felt like I rubbed my belly on the ground there. But yeah, now we're going to go ahead and jump into working on the farm down here. 
Gonna start with a little work on this field because I plan on the villagers being down here eventually, so I'm gonna trade it out with carrots because I'd rather take the wheat. But I went ahead and made sure it was all hydrated before I harvested so that I wouldn't have to till it again. And it was nice getting all this wheat. If I didn't do this and let the villagers out, they would have harvested the wheat and replaced it with carrots, but the wheat is by far the most useful crop nowadays. And yeah, just put a little work in. I always like to slab up my farms for a few reasons. They don't trample crops, they look good, and they make it easier to traverse just so you can walk up and down without having to jump. So I think it's a cool little trick. I'm going to put in a whole bunch of work hydrating and tilling the land down here. I will say right now, I am realizing that doing big fields like this right around where I have all the villagers might not be the best combo, so I might end up adjusting things here a little bit in the future, but I wanted a big field down here, so we're going with it for now. Start by getting all the carrots planted. I could have just let the villagers do that, but I don't know when, I, when I'm going to end up letting them down here, so got the carrots planted for now. Pretty big job there. Really big job here. Probably the biggest field I've ever planted in one session. And we got ourselves a big field of wheat here. And it's nice having it all hydrated so that if I eventually want to come down and harvest this, I can just get a whole bunch of wheat in bulk, which is handy for mud bricks and all that. And yeah, from above, you can see it looks really good. Like I said, I really like having the borders with the slabs. I think it just makes farms look cool. And now it's time to actually get going on the foundations of the buildings down here. Gonna start with the barn. And I've built barns similar to this many times before, so after lots of practice, this actually came out pretty easily here. So yeah, it's a 15 by 19 just for reference. But other than that, I'm gonna let you just watch it develop here for a second. And let me just say, this barn is just the beginning of me really cooking through my materials this episode. When we're all said and done, I'm looking pretty bad on stone variants and wood variants and all that type of stuff, considering how long I've been in this world. So yeah, I just end up having to do lots of terraforming. Just getting spaces to work, but we've got enough to get through, so we just keep on pushing. I think we got it looking like a barn here. Definitely the early stages, but I'm really happy with the size and shape of it. Then we get going on a silo next to it just to bring things together. And I always kind of slack on building silos. I just don't think of it a lot of times, but they just look really nice next to your barn and they're such a simple build. Just kind of get your circle created and tower up however tall you need. I like to try to work out a little rounded roof so you just kind of work your way in and the trick is not just using stairs and going up by one level at a time sometimes you got to increase by a slab or put a full block in under your stair just to kind of create the shape you want and yeah i think it ends up looking pretty good here i, I really like the placement and just the scale of the barn and the silo i think it's looking really good now it's time to get going on the windmill down here and this is going to take a little terraforming as well. You can see I'm just going right over the wheat field. I just like the location of this better, so we'll adjust that accordingly. And I go with a pretty simple windmill here. Just get my base, and then I think it's Dutch windmills I'm kind of being inspired by. Not so tall and skinny, but kind of a shorter, stumpier uh, base, I guess you would say, for 
the windmill building itself. Couldn't help myself from doing my little castle style roof that I enjoy to do so much though. And yeah, just kind of use stairs to round things off and give a little bit of a trim. But then I got going on the blade here and I just kind of work out the shape of one wing. I'm kind of going for a rounded shape here best I can, but uh, once you get one established, you just work it around the rest of the blade, imagine how it would be spinning. Then I went around with some stone bricks to uh, kind of create the actual blade. I usually use fences for this, but stone bricks actually work better just because they're solid and they really give that blade look. I really like how it ended up looking at the end here. One of my favorite blades I've made, actually, and really simple. And yeah, I'm really happy with how the farm's coming together down here. Obviously, very much stage one. Not much detail into these builds at all yet, but just the general shape and scale and size of everything and placement, I'm just really liking how everything's looking. And yeah, now I'm going to let you in on a little something I've been working off camera. I know I didn't mentioned last episode what I actually plan on doing with this lighthouse and I plan on it just being kind of where I store my corals and fish and sea stuff but then I had the idea of digging underneath and maybe making a little aquarium type thing down here since I knew I could dig into the wall here and connect to the water but then I decided I'm yet to have a main storage place yet so I went ahead and dropped a little more, so I've been digging off camera a little bit, and I've decided that this area under my lighthouse is where I'm gonna eventually kind of get my main storage area for my spawn area, general spawn area. So I thought it'd be cool to just expand out into the walls and have some cool windows under the sea. I do like to build my main storage places underground so that I can extend back into the walls as I need to, if it needs to grow with time. So yeah, this is gonna be a long-term project, but I just wanted to let you in on kind of my idea here, and you'll find out a little later why it's gonna be a long-term project. But yeah, you can see once you get the windows put in, it really clears things up, so you actually end up with a really nice view of the outside. I know it probably doesn't come through on YouTube very well, especially at night. And one really cool thing about this area is that I get the tropical fish. It's a stony beach. I, I guess it's a tropical area just in this one corner pretty much. So I get the tropical fish and turtles and dolphins and squid. So it's going to be a cool place for a view into the ocean. I've always wanted to do an underwater base. I've done little rooms like this before, but I've never really done a big room with a bunch of cool windows looking into the sea here. And yeah, it's starting to come together here and we can expand here however much we need and we could extend and just have this be a full rounded wall of glass looking into the sea and we can terraform the sea a little bit and bring some corals in and some lights in there so it'll just look really cool and kind of an inside out aquarium and yeah you can see just cool views of the bays from below just a different perspective and I just think it's looking really cool. I'm really happy with it. Now it's time to jump into getting these bridges done that I was talking about earlier. And we're going to start with the big main one. After I do a little AFK session, mending my tools and getting some bones. We get going on the bridge here. And let me just say, editing this was kind of a nightmare. I, I think this I was working on this area overall for almost five hours just kind of experimenting and building from underneath is just takes so long sometimes but yeah I also lost a couple of the important clips and me kind of stepping back and showing my progress so we adjust a lot from here but just showing you that I kind of built out the bridge in the middle about the size I wanted it and then I was going to bring the land out to meet it so the terraforming is what really took all the time here and all the materials mainly stone because I brought up the walls everywhere I extended the land out which was quite a bit 
I had to bring the stone up to make it look better and that just took a lot of time and a lot of materials and I tried my best to make it look good, give a little interest to the shape, kind of work from the inside out like I do a lot of the time. I think this wall actually ended up not looking too bad. Obviously it's just with full blocks. If I came through with slabs and stairs and give some textures and some greenery, it would look better. But this side was the real complicated side. It was just so awkward with how the bridge was going off it. So I really had to put in some serious work getting a decent shape here of a rock wall that would make sense. Did a whole bunch of just working my way up, kind of laying a skeleton out and bringing the rocks up to meet it. And you can see how much material this ends up using. Then I got back to working on the bridge a little bit, putting some tough blocks on the underside just to kind of create a little depth and shade. And I worked on the shape of the bridge, just kind of getting it a little rounded as you go across and put in the path. I ended up making a border of the, with the uh, deep slate bricks so that it matched up with what I had going on already coming off the spawn area. Put in a few street lights and we're feeling pretty good about things. Like I said, that was hours of work. Go ahead and take a quick view at the night time even though we're in a rainstorm but I think it looks really good I think the extending the path and having those lights go across just look really cool but we'll go ahead and sleep so we can look at it in the day lots of work here but I think it looks really cool and again like pretty much all our builds this episode we're not going to kind of get to a fully finished state but finished enough that it's presentable so yeah like i said this would look a lot better coming through with some slabs and stairs and good little texture but i think this wall actually ended up coming out looking really good considering it was such a hard area to work with it looks somewhat natural and i think the bridge just looks really good now, i don't know about you but after all of that and considering last episode i'm kind of bridged out at this point but i still wanted to get them done so I came over here and gonna do a little magic trick for you and just show you that i got the bridge done here definitely nothing fancy when i come over to the area and actually start building here i'll probably change things a little bit but yeah you can see i had to do a certain amount of terraforming here as well actually ended up creating this cool little land area for something here I thought it was kind of cool and I did kind of decide after building this that the tough bricks don't contrast enough I think it would have looked better just with regular stone bricks so I took that lesson and did that over here for this angled bridge which was obviously going to be a lot bigger and a lot more work once again we're going to have to extend this land out here a little bit just because we don't want the bridge starting way back here but once again i'm a magician just do a little trick for you here and we got her done and this one actually came together pretty nicely and smoothly it didn't really take me too long but yeah just extended the land out here quite a bit to make the bridge start at a point that i liked it and did the same on the other side and yeah i got a kind of cool shaped bridge here just using the slabs to get a nice rounded shape work its way up and we also extended the path all the way up here created the staircase and had it meet up with our path in the spawn area so our whole base is officially connected by a loop of a path so i think that's really cool and i'm really proud of that and it does kind of inspire you to spread around and build some things on that path but yeah take a little view of the bridge from down here once again pretty simple I'll probably come back and put some details into it at some point, but as far as the shape and the location and size and everything, I think it looks really good. And I think it makes for a cool kind of gateway from the boat as you enter our main basin down here. But at this point, I was ready to jump back into the farm area here and just kind of bring things up a level. Again, this is just the 
next stage of the process i'm not going too crazy with the details or anything but just doing the big things like getting a fence around the animal pen and getting a door for the barn i do like to use fences for barn windows i just think it looks good and i always like to put a little shape at the top of my barn just because i feel like barns always have something like that yeah just got going on a basic interior here nothing too fancy just getting things laid out i got using some jungle for the ceiling and i decided i liked the color combo there so i went ahead and traded my fences out for jungle and i went up too high because i decided it was going to be a horse pen so i needed them too high so the horses couldn't escape got a ladder up to the top level here i feel like barns always have some kind of a loft so i thought this was cool we can do some storage or do something up there definitely a place to do something and yeah nice basic interior here but at least it's presentable and overall i think we got the barn looking pretty good now i just go around with some slabs to extend the trim out on the silo here just to give it a little more shape nothing too fancy but all the little things add up and i went around with some paths just figuring where people would naturally be walking and made the patio of the barn a little nicer just want it to be a nice barn and yeah i think our barn silo combo is looking really good we'll come through with some bone meal and add a few decorations down here and it'll bring things together yeah we got working on the windmill i stole all the wheat from underneath because Wheat is kind of valuable and had to do a good amount of terraforming and this actually ended up turning into a decent sized project as I brought the stone up all the way around here. But I just like not having the floating grass. I just, you don't need to put much work in to make it look a lot better than just the floating grass. And yeah, I got back to the windmill, just kind of working my way around. I'm not working on the interior or anything. I do plan on putting a villager wheat farm over here so that I got one working when I'm working in this spawn area. But that's not something I'm gonna work on today. We're just trying to make it look pretty for the most part. I think we got it looking pretty good. Once again, once we get some bone meal and foliage down here, it'll just look even nicer. But another thing I wanted to do down in this farm area was get a little farm stand. So I thought this corner would be a perfect place, kind of transition from the main city area down into the farm area and just have this be where the farmers are selling their crops from all these fields. And I wanted to build it in an angle. Just anytime you can get something built at an angle just to go with all the square buildings, I think it looks pretty good. And I think this ended up looking really cool. Kind of bigger than the usual farm stands I've done, but it works out. Now we actually have a place to have our farmers work rather than just in front of my house up there. Then I got going on adding some details and just making it a little more obvious what it is. And I think we ended up getting the place looking pretty cool. And this little detail session kind of set me off on to what will be this last little montage of me just doing all kinds of random things just tidying things up and getting things as presentable as i can for the world tour coming up so yeah we brought the wheat field up a little bit to bring it closer to the windmill i just think it ended up looking cool and we went through and put some scarecrows in the field we don't want the birds eating our crops plus it adds a little light and just that just looks cool add some variation then i created a few wheat piles kind of by the windmill in the barn just to stick with the farm theme as well as just creating some random stones just making the ground not so flat and went around with some bone meal and making things look a little more lively and place some street lamps and while i was on the subject of light i went ahead and started getting some hidden lighting going on like I have in the rest of the base and I ended up doing the whole area down here then I figured since I went this far I might as well 
work on getting the fence around the outside so that I can actually let the villagers out here. Just give them a whole bunch more space and help with the vibe. So yeah, I spent some time spawn proofing a few areas and I'll wait a few nights before I let them out and make sure we don't have any spawns coming on. So I kept at work and expanded our jungle back here, just creating kind of a forest. And I've been procrastinating on making this area a little patio for the tavern, so finally went ahead and did that. Then I put a little effort into getting some texture going on down at the boardwalk. I just think this looks a little better than the plain old spruce planks. Then I spent a little time actually getting animals for our barn, hunted a couple cows down, and tamed my first horse of the season, which is actually pretty crazy to say. I don't know how I didn't do that earlier, and look how slow this guy is. This is me trying to run. I thought my controller was broken. But then when I got the second horse, he was actually nice and quick. One of the quicker horses I've gotten, so... If I do go riding a horse, this will be my guy. And I finished things up by doing a nice little bone mill session, adding a few patches of different flowers and just going around and getting grass created and ended with getting some acacia trees going just to get that different green color going on down here. Then I decided I better just make myself quit because I could work on these little details forever, but I think we got ourselves at a pretty good spot. We got a whole lot done this episode. I think this farm is awesome down here. You got to remember, we had none of this before we started today. And pretty much the vision I had just totally came to fruition, and I'm just super happy with it. And what better time to take it all in than at sunrise. And yeah, the montage didn't really do justice to how much work I put in down here, getting the area lit up and spawn proofed and I think the farm stand just looks really cool over here I like that angle and the pop of color but yeah we spent a lot of time getting the area spawn proofed and getting the fence built all the way around so villagers can't escape and zombies can't get in so I get to break these awkward fences down and now we got the area just looking nicer little nervous letting the villagers out but I've gone through quite a few nights and haven't noticed any spawns so it's a risk worth taking here and while I run around and take down some of these barriers I'm gonna let those of you who stuck it out till the bitter end here in on the fact that after all of this I'm actually going to be leaving this area for a little while I didn't know how exactly I wanted to do this series here but I decided I probably should break it up into seasons. Just give myself a reason to get a fresh start here and there. And I think you all would like that as well, I would think. I know I that's how I kind of like it. And I think YouTube would like it. So I'm just going to do a little experiment. As much as I hate to leave what we've got going on here for the time being, I'll be back before too long. I'm going to just go maybe a couple thousand blocks away and give myself some criteria to earn my way back to this spawn area. Believe me, this is my baby. I don't don't plan on leaving this, but I think it would be fun to just kind of go to a new area. We've been down on this island here for half a year now, so I'm really excited for that, so stay tuned. But yeah, I really like this forest we got going on up here. I was making it just as kind of a placeholder, so I didn't have all this blank land. I can come back and do something different with it, but I really like how it looks here. and I like that it creates these revelations. Rather than just having the view all the time, I like having to earn the view a little bit here. But yeah, with that, I think we're in a pretty good spot for this world tour. I'm feeling like we've got most of our projects in a pretty presentable spot for the most part. Don't have a bunch of unfinished things lying around and few interiors aren't done on some of the newer things, but that's all right. And yeah, so I look forward to seeing you next episode. I want to thank you all for coming and have a good day.